Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to Programming Challenge. In each video of this series, I'll present you with a programming challenge and then walk through the steps of actually solving it. The challenges will start fairly simple, but they'll certainly get harder by the time we're done. For the next uh, couple episodes, or for a while, we're going to be using questions from a programming competition that I just finished holding called CodeLM. It's a programming competition that I hosted at my high school. Uh, if you go to CodeLM.com, uh, then you'll get this page, and this is where you can actually grab the questions that we used in the competition, and that's what we're going to go over in this series. So to begin, we'll use the intermediate questions. Um, so just click on that, and uh, you'll, you'll get access to the questions. You can scroll through the rules, and here's problem one, which is what we're going to do today. In addition, uh, and this won't always be the case, but with this, um, you can download starter code. We actually provided some starter code for our classes. It's up to you if you want to use it or not, um, but it can help you a little bit. So, for example, we're going to be doing Java, so I'm going to take the problem1.java file and stick it into Eclipse. And then let me open it up, and you'll see we have this uh, set up right here. So we'll, we'll come back to that in one second. Let's just take a look at the actual problem. Now I'm going to go through the problem, maybe explain if something uh, is a little bit fuzzy, um, and then at the end, I'm going to actually solve the problem. So I challenge you, after I explain it, to try and do it on your own. Uh, but if you're having trouble, then you can certainly refer back to here to figure out um, exactly how to solve it. So here's the question. New Wave Computers, a fictional company that we made up for the competition, sells four products, hard drives, software packages, W phones, and W pens. The retail division needs a program that will quickly calculate the total cost of a purchase from one of their stores. Their pricing scheme, as explained below, is very complicated. So there's your overview of the problem. Now the input. In each of these problems, uh, you will essentially be writing a function or a method that will have some input and it'll give an output. You could also do this, you know, with a scanner or input or, you know, whatever way you want to do it. It's up to you. But the input is going to be four integers, drives, software, phones, and pens. These values represent the quantities of hard drives, software packages, W phones, and W pens purchased. The output is going to be the total cost of all of the products as a double or float value. So that just explains the overall problem, what you're going to get in as input, what you're going to give back. And now, uh, the pricing scheme. This is the most important part because this is how you're going to frame your logic. So hard drives cost $49.95 each. Customers receive 5% off the cost of hard drives if more than 5 are purchased. They receive 10% off if more than 10 are purchased. The 5% discount does not stack, and the total discount at this level is 10%. So essentially, if they buy um, between, I guess, 6 and 10, then they get a 5% discount. If they buy more than 10, then they get a 10% discount, not a 15% discount. Software packages cost $25 each, with 10% off the total software cost for each W phone purchased. This discount cannot make the software cost zero dollars. Sorry, it can make it cost no less than zero dollars. As in, uh, you can't get money back. You can't say that the software costs negative ten dollars and then give the the uh, purchaser ten dollars back. W phones, nice and simple, three ninety nine each or three hundred ninety nine dollars each. Um, and then number four, the cost of a W pen is determined on a sliding scale, which is described by the chart below. So you can see um, how that works. There are different prices based on the quantity purchased. And then finally, a 6% sales tax should be added to all products. Then you have your note. Your output will be checked to the nearest whole number. You do not need to worry about rounding or truncating a return value. So we're just going to give back whatever mathematical result we get, and that will hopefully be the correct answer. And then you'll see all of the sample data. Here's our inputs, here's the correct output, and then there's an explanation explaining exactly where all of the prices come from. So, uh, now that we understand the problem, hopefully we do understand the problem, now it's time to actually get to work implementing it. Now I challenge you to pause here and see if you can actually do it by yourself, or at least do some of it by yourself. And if you can't, then that's just fine. 
Some of you may be sitting here thinking, well, this problem is incredibly easy, and, well, you're right, because this is the very first problem for the, uh, the least advanced division. The intermediate division in the competition is the lowest. It's for people with maybe a couple months of computer science experience. But believe me, by the end of this, we're going to have some really, really challenging problems. So uh, just stick around, and you'll, you'll eventually get there. Now, let's go ahead and implement this. We'll go back over to Eclipse, and I think we should probably change that to a double. Uh, that might have been my mistake. And so now we're going to actually implement this. And the way that I would do this is just go step by step. So I would say um, there are five different steps. So we'll figure out the pricing at each one, and then maybe add them all together at the end or something like that. So first off, let's do hard drives. Hard drives are fairly simple, $49.95 each. And then there's the whole discount thing. Um, so we'll say, I guess we can get rid of this stuff too, because we don't really need that right now. So we'll say, um, we'll say HD cost is, uh, we'll say, actually we can say this. We can say that uh, a hard drive is $49.95 each times the number of drives. So if there were no discounts at all, then that would be um, the price. And then we'll say that if drives is uh, greater than 5, well actually we'll do it like this. We'll say if it's greater than 10, and then we'll say else if it's greater than 5. Um, because if it's greater than 10, it'll go here. If it's not, you know, otherwise we'd have a little bit more logic. So, um, but this will work. So if drives is greater than 10, then we have to give a 10%. So we have to say um, HD cost minus equals HD cost uh, times 0.1, and I believe that should work because we're subtracting one-tenth of the cost because you get a 10% discount off of the hard drives. And then otherwise here, um, it is a 5% discount, so you do 0 0.05. And so that'll tell us the cost of the hard drives. That's the first part, and hopefully this should work. Of course, we'll test it and make sure that everything is good. Uh, okay, software packages cost $25 each, with $10 off the total software cost for each W phone purchased. And remember, the discount cannot make the software a negative value. So you can't have, you know, negative $10 and give the money back. So that's the trick, but there's a really easy way around that. So, um, for example, or, you know, we'll actually do it. So we'll say double software cost is equal to... Um, and, and we can actually do this in one line, but what we're going to do is we're going to write math.max. We want to find the maximum between zero or uh, software times the cost, which is 25 minus 10 times uh, the number of phones. And I'm going to explain this in a second. Okay, this part that I have highlighted here should be fairly simple. We're saying the number of software packages times 25 minus 10 times the number of phones, or I can say minus phones times 10, just for continuity. Um, so basically we're just saying this is the cost of the software minus the cost, or the discount per phone. And that makes sense, but the problem is that that could theoretically be zero, because if you buy a ton of phones, then you could have a negative value. So this math.max thing here says that if zero is greater than this result, then software cost will be zero, otherwise it'll be this. Now, you don't need to do this, uh, you know, you could have an if statement. You could say software cost equals software times 25 minus phone times 10, and then say if software cost is less than zero, software cost is equal to zero. But I kind of like this. I think it looks cool. Um, not, not cool, but I, I think it's like a, an elegant solution to your problem. Um, but it's up to you. You could, of course, do it either way. Uh, next up is W phones, and of course that's really easy. So we'll say phone cost is just th what is it, three ninety nine times phones, and this part the W pen is fairly simple. It's just going to be an if statement. So um, we'll say double uh, W pen. Sorry, we'll say pen cost is. I suppose that we'll um, we'll start it at zero, and we'll say that if pens is one then uh, pen cost is 500. And you know, you could do this with the switch statement or you know, however you want to do this, but I think that this is 
just simple enough. So if two are purchased, then it's 450 times two. And you know, we can write it out 500 times one just to get the idea, because remember, this is the cost per pen, not the cost of all of the pens together. Um, and that's something important to keep in mind. So this would be equal to, what is it, uh, 400 times three. Uh, if pens is four, and yeah, this is a little bit tedious, but um, you know, it's not that bad. And remember that these problems were given in a time setting. Um, each team had two and a half hours to solve seven problems. Um, so, you know, whatever way is faster, you really just want to get it done. So pen cost is 300 times pens. And that part is important. I guess you could write pens here for all of them, but it's 300 times the number of pens. So they could buy 200 pens, and it'll be 300 times that, not 300 times 5 or anything like that. It's not, you know, that kind of pattern. This should actually be greater than or equal to 5, I just realized. Okay. So now we've found out all of the individual costs. We have HD cost, software cost, phone cost, and pen cost. And I kind of want to rename this to be drive cost because it just fits with the other names better. And the last thing we have to do is we have to, um, we need to apply the sales tax and give it back as the return value. So we're going to return drive cost plus software cost, not code, cost, plus phone cost, plus pen cost, and we're going to apply the entire thing by 1.06. And what that will do is, of course, multiplying it by 1 will give you back the value, but it's multiplying it by 1.06, so the value is going to be uh, itself plus, uh, you know, 6 one hundredths, which is the 6% sales tax. So that's a really quick way to apply sales tax. Otherwise, you'd have to do this whole thing plus the whole thing times 0.06 or something like that, and it's not very elegant. Now, we should run this now, should work, and these values here, I have this all set up, this was given to the competitors, that it would have a couple of function calls, and you'll see that it matches up with the sample data um, right here, and I want to make sure that these are correct because there is a slight chance that the values could be wrong, but I think that they're right. So now if I hit run, we should get more or less these exact same values. And let's see if we actually solve the problem. Going to hit run. Okay, so first, 1021.787, and that is indeed what we got. Now remember, uh, when this one was being scored, uh, all of these decimal places actually don't matter. What happens is it gets truncated to just be 1021, so that's correct. 3721, 4775, and 7811. So in that case, it looks like we actually solved it because we have four different um, sample datas. And if you look here, you can see, like, for example, this last one, the software cost was zero. And I believe that if you didn't check correctly, then the software cost could become a negative value there. So, like, that's a good sample data to see if they accounted for the negative cost or not. And, you know, you can see that there's a wide variety of different uh, sample datas, and it worked for all four of these, so I would say that we got this problem solved. So, if you were able to solve the problem yourself, then congratulations, uh, but don't pat yourself on the back too much, because this was by no means the hardest problem that we're going to come to. We have a lot more from CodeLM 2016, uh, and then after that, believe me, I have a whole stash full of very interesting problems. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more programming. Bye for now.